Hello, my name is Christina Anderson. I'm the regional district of the Treaty Boundary Watershed Planner in the Boundary Region. My office is based out of Grand Forks, and today I'll be providing a drought update for July 2020 for the Boundary Region. It's about just over 10 minutes and looking at the different classifications that we are using for drought monitoring. Some historical information for our region, monitoring tools that I found pretty useful. We'll talk a little bit about the drought response plan. It's in draft form and we're hoping to have it out to the public within a month. Within a month. So the first part is going to be what's our area. So as you likely recognize the red outline here is the regional district Kootenai boundary boundary region only notice it does not include the Kootenai side of it and this orange shape is the Kettle River watershed boundary and it incorporates the whole area as you can see it is does fall outside on the north side of the regional district of North Okanagan and our north south side our southern partners in the states one of the other really interesting points here is that we the boundary for the Kootenai boundary is not all in the Kettle River watershed. We do have 53 kilometers squared that is located in the Okanagan River watershed. So keeping in mind as we're going through this, if you are looking at what is your drought classification and you're located in say the Nine Mile Creek area, you're going to be going at the drought classification for the Okanagan watershed, not the Kettle watershed. The regional district of Kootenai boundary does refer to the provincial drought level classifications in order to be able to determine some of the recommendations for conservation actions that are associated with water conservation and efficient water use. So provincial drought level classifications are, there's four levels. Level one, normal conditions, sufficient water to meet human ecosystem needs. Well, it's, it's fairly, showing it's fairly average for this time of year for the a year. Level two, dry conditions. Three, very dry conditions. So that potential serious ecosystem and socioeconomic impacts are possible. And four, extremely dry conditions. This is where you could have a chance that water supply is insufficient to meet socioeconomic and ecosystems needs. And I say may, mainly because you have to remember this is a, a drought classification that's put on by the province for the whole watershed. So what might be happening in Beaverdale might be different than what's going on in Christina Lake. So understanding that they are going to be focusing on where is the worst case scenario and what's represented in that area. So if we start looking at our current and historical droughts for the boundary region, we're going to see that the whole province is in level one at the moment. So I do want to first bring your attention to that top right hand side that tells you last drought level update. So it's got the July 13th, so we're just over a week away from the last time that this was updated. Really important to look at that, just being able to understand, especially in right now that we're experiencing these high temperatures, low precipitation, it's good to understand is this maybe relative or representative for what I'm seeing right now? So we do know it was a little while ago. They're going to hopefully update it again, usually within two weeks, if the conditions are fairly steady. But we were able to click on the kettle. So there's your Kettle River watershed outline right there. Notice that it's level one, and the Okanagan Basin is right beside it, and it's also showing as a level one. So remember that was at normal conditions. It's normal for this time of year. Again, this is also what you can look at it, whether you're looking at the map or whether you're looking at the chart or the normal conditions for 2020. So what have we seen over the last couple of years? So the provincial government was only doing the monitoring of the drought classifications in the style that we're seeing right now since 2015. So this is all that we're going to be seeing in terms of these charts. So you can see in 2019, we did start at that low to very dry conditions very early on in the summer due to temperature and precipitations, it did ease off and we certainly were seeing that precipitation by middle of September last year. 2018, everybody remembers how much water was coming through. It was that level one that, you know, high normal conditions, you don't ever go into a high, so the level one is your top condition. Just say that there isn't any expected drought concerns at that point in time. But as you can see, as we progress through with really hot temperatures, low precipitation, we did hit to that very dry conditions. I really want you to pay attention to the 2017 and the 2016 one right after this. The reason why I focused on these two years is because, so here we have normal conditions, and that's pretty similar to what we're seeing right now, that, that level one condition early on in our summer. 
as the temperature increased and we had low precipitation, as you can see, is Kettle and the Okanagan. We got to the very dry conditions, and then we've got extremely dry conditions. I'm going to be showing you some precipitation and temperature uh, station information in a little bit here, and I've included the 2017 and 2016 information in the analysis, just so you can have a look at how that changes and why we were coming down to those, those really dry conditions. So keeping that in mind, as we are in normal conditions right now, based off the provincial classification, it doesn't mean that we're going to be staying in those normal conditions and certainly to prepare for those drier times. 2016 again, started normal, we're down into dry conditions, and then we'll see how the temperatures were a bit lower and a bit more increased precipitation, and we kept sort of at that normal dry condition stage throughout the year. And then this is the beginning of the drought classification for the province. There are a variety of different monitoring stations within the boundary region. This is just a quick map and it's found on the RDKV webpage under their emergency response for Freshet. And it's looking specifically at the discharge stations and snow stations. There's also a number of climate stations throughout our region. A lot of our monitoring is done federally and provincially. Uh, the main ones that we're looking at for the drought is going to be your Water Survey of Canada, and we'll talk about that in the next slide here. And that's looking at discharge, so your water levels and your flow coming in your system. It does focus on larger systems, so it is harder to deal with, interpret, when we're looking at also those, the effects on those smaller systems. So this is another really interesting site that uh, I would welcome everybody to go and check out. It's a BC Groundwater Observation Well. We have three observation wells in our region, one in Grand Forks, one in Midway, and one in Beaverdell. These are the current stations, so just so that you're aware, Grand Forks, the transmission is down for that station, so even though it is recording data, it isn't showing up. I believe the last date for the download was April. They are going to be visiting the site shortly. If you have any questions about what the the groundwater observation well is for the Grand Forks area, please let me know, send me an email, and I'll find out when the next date that they'll be updating the information or downloading the information. So as we've spoken a bit about that discharge station, so what I've just done is I've just pulled two discharge readings from systems that we know fairly well here in the Boundary Region, the Grand Bay River, which is located at Grand Forks. So you can see this is from July 1st to the 21st. You can see that we were over average. So this is our average levels, the normal level for this time of year based off what we've seen over the last many decades. They, we've been above average for quite a while. We're just starting to drop below average and we're slightly below average right now. Again, with these hot temperatures and low precipitation, we may see this changing. So it's something that I'm really starting to watch closely now. And again, the Kettle River, so this is over at Westbridge. You're gonna see this uh, jog in the data every once in a while. What that just means is that they've had to reevaluate, re-gauge their discharge readings based off the water level. So that's a jog down, but again, we're looking at that below average, just starting to get below average for this time. So this is the climate station information. So right now, that's one of the biggest things that we're looking at in terms of our drought classification. Precipitation, how much precipitation are we getting? What is the temperature? It's really handy to do it. What is it based on as normal? But really, are we getting those high, high temperatures? So here we have the precipitation for the climate, Grand Forks climate station. It's put on by the, monitored by the province. So we can see that it's really very high precipitation in May. And what I've overlaid is 2016 and 2017. So you remember that 2017, we went very, very dry to extremely dry. Look at the precipitation. We've got very low precipitation for July, nothing in August, very little for September, and we start coming up into that precipitation again by November. So we remember that extremely dry, very low precipitation. But we did have the precipitation in that 2016. So we saw that you know, going to that level one, level two in 2016. And then for the temperature, so higher temperatures in, uh, in 2017, the orange, then compared to the 2016, so lower temperatures in 2016, generally. So it's sort of something to think about. So really, as you're sensing the high temperatures and low precipitation, keep that in mind that we may start seeing those changes in those drought level conditions in the province. Rock Creek, similar story. 
again, that higher precipitation for the 2016 level compared to that 2017 level, which was really not a lot of precipitation the whole summer. And again, the higher temperatures in the 2017 compared to the 2016. One thing to notice though, if you look at what we have right now, which is the orange, which is the current temperature for the Rock Creek area, we certainly are above that, that 2017. So this is the 2017, 2016 are averages. What you're seeing in the current, this 2020 information is daily information. So keep in mind, they're not, they're not necessarily the same. Eight Mile Creek, so this is up in the Granby watershed. Again, you're seeing that temperature, higher temperatures in the 2017 compared to those lower temperatures for 2016. And this is where we're coming up with our precipitation. July 21st, we're certainly below that average line, which is that dark line there in the center there of the average precipitation for that month. Some of the other useful tools that I also like to see and incorporate when doing some of this analysis, IMAP, and feel free to give me a shout. I've got some paperwork on how to walk yourself through the IMAP system. I think it's a really great tool of looking at a lot of the provincial database, provincial information that we have out there. So this is what I have as a layer showing you all the aquifers that are mapped for our region. This is another one, the Kootenai Boundary Water Tool. I was using this one to do all that climate data information that you saw just above. That's the tool I use. So what I have here, the watershed reporting, stream level and water levels, surface water quality, groundwater level and climate, those are all, that's the definition of what each one of these apps or these tabs represents. I threw this in because I think it's a, it's a useful tool, uh, but keep in mind, these are all just tools. When you start doing these calculations and the modeling, it's a tool. Uh, it's really based off the data, the timeline, that you're putting that data in and doing the analysis for. So this is a Palmer Trout Index. This is put out by Agriculture and Agri-Group Canada. And it's looking at the soil moisture conditions for our region. So as you can see, I've sort of outlined a little bit to where our region is. And as you can see, we are above normal for those soil moisture conditions. This isn't looking at what humans are doing to affect the soil moisture condition. This is more looking at precipitation, temperature, and the local available water content of the soil. So keeping that in mind as well. So this doesn't include irrigation. Here's another, again, another tool. There's been some uh, concerns about its accuracy when you start getting into the uh, extreme ends of the, of the assessment, but this is looking at shallow groundwater throughout, really this tool does the whole world. But it was focused in the States, it was looking at shallow groundwater indicators throughout, uh, well, our region and, and, and North America. So I've circled parods. I mean, this is a very big area. This is including the Okanagan, but it, it's somewhat of where we are. So it's looking like we are slightly on the drier side based off an analysis period from 1948 to 2012. So I really wanted to touch quickly on the Boundary Region Drought Response Plan. Like I said, we're hoping to have it out within a month to the public. What this plan is gonna be doing, we tried to make a short document of just under 10 pages, just gives you recommendations, what you do with these different levels. So we've gone to the province, we've seen that we're in level one, what does that mean? What are the impacts to me? And so this is giving you, gives you a quick apply update on some of the things to look at, focus maintaining leaks, continuing that efficient water use, making sure that you're conserving water as much as possible. And for agricultural producers, really irrigating to ensure that you've got that soil, soil water retention. So in the event in preparation for drier periods that as we saw previously in that 2017 map, we could see some very dry conditions coming in based again on that temperature and the um, precipitation. A lot of this information does come from the Provincial Drought Response Plan, and I realize that address is a bit long, so by all means, Google Provincial Drought Response Plan. It's a very interesting document of how the province responds to some of these drought conditions. Um, please provide me your questions. One of the things that I do with the regional, as the Regional District Representative is I do attend the boundary or the regional drought calls with the province. So I'm able to report out what are we seeing on the ground. The biggest thing that we want to make sure that we do is that any type of provincial 
classification or regulatory action or response does make sense to what we're seeing. So I, I really encourage people to tell me if you are seeing some of those low water concerns. You notice water levels that could be affecting the aquatic habitat that, that you're worried about. But you know, above all, make sure that your works, your water lines are, are well maintained and, and leak free as much as possible. Thank you very much.